Uh, really, my stance is the same. Um, it was awesome, <laughs> right? I mean, it was really amazing to see it happen. Um, the we saw it work. What happens when it doesn't work? When it doesn't work? Um, because there's a good chance it does at some point. What if that car went up in the air uh, into the catch fence, right? And then the other piece of it too, uh, you have to think about is not only the risk for the driver and the fans, but also the integrity of the sport. Is that what we want? Um, yes, it was cool. It made top 10 plays all as it should. It was awesome, but it doesn't take and I'm not taking this away from Ross, so don't take this the wrong way. It doesn't take much talent to do it. It just takes a insane amount of guts to do it because you're taking a huge risk. But he's just holding it wide open, putting this wall. That's what you did when you're a kid racing a video game and you couldn't get around Martinsville. That's what you did. Um, so it's it's he just actually did it in real life, which is amazing. But I don't think we want to see all the cars going through the wall in the final corner of every race on the last lap. I don't know if that's what we want. <laughs> what can you explain? Like Larson said, it's a bad look. Um, well, why is this frowned upon among racers? Well, I mean, I said that like, it's. Well, I just kind of said. It doesn't take I just skill, said why. It doesn't well, take and, and it's and it's risky. It's risky. It's not the X Games. This is NASCAR. It's a different thing than that. Um, and you know, I mean. There's a, there's a place for it. Like I said, it was cool. It was a neat move. We all talked about doing it before. He actually did it. He had a good reason to do it, and he's rewarded by being here in the championship four. That's that's fine. Mm -hmm. like that's, that's all well and good. But the next time it happens, it's not as cool. And the next time, and the next time. And then all of a sudden, not a leader has to put himself in the fence to finish first. Well, that's just, yeah. at that point, it doesn't look really yeah. right. It's in, my, in my opinion, it doesn't look right at that point. Does it send a bad message to younger racers as well? I mean, it can happen at your local short track just as easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it literally can happen anywhere. Um, it doesn't really even matter the car. I mean, you can do this in a truck. You can do it in an Xfinity car. You can do it in a late model. Uh, it, it's, it's not tricky to do. Like I said, it's just very risky. Jeff Burton used you as the poster child when referring to Ty Gibbs and somebody who had to grow up in the spotlight. And having been in that organization before moving to Penske, where there's probably a little more discipline, um, you know, because there's pretty much more of a depth of veteran motorsports people over there. Um, can you feel for what he's going through at all? Yeah, I, I do. And then I said this when I was on Corey's podcast. Uh, when was it Wednesday, Tuesday when I was over there? Um, we've all done stupid things when we were kids. Every one of us, right? You can go back when you were 15, 18, 20. You probably did something that wasn't real smart. Probably said something you shouldn't have said. But that was amongst your high school friends or maybe your parents or, you know, maybe just a couple things. And then it gets forgotten about, right? And you kind of just move on. Not many people heard about it. You kind of just want to... Well, for Ty, and for anybody that is in the limelight of, of trying to do something at a professional level, you have the spotlight on you that is, it's there. And you have to learn in front of all these people. It doesn't mean you're not gonna make stupid mistakes though. I'm still gonna make a stupid mistake at some point. It, you know, after all the ones I've already had, I'm, I'm still learning. Right? I'm, I'm continuing to do that, but, um, the mistakes that happen is in front of everyone and for all you guys to judge it. And as much as we say it's not fair, it's also just life and that's what it is. Um, I'm sure he's learned a lot of lessons from this one. I can't say I agree with much that he did uh, or said, but I also have some sympathy in saying, man, I've been there, I get it. Um, it stinks because it's there forever. I, I Shoot, I think of it now even when my son wants to watch races on YouTube, and the next thing up, because he wants to watch Dad, well, next thing's up is Dad doing something stupid that's still living on YouTube, right? Like, and it's there forever. And imagine when your kid's watching it. There's a whole different level there for you. So this this is life. It, it's I can't get mad at it. You can't get mad at people making judgments off of that. It's entertaining. People want to talk about it. There's nothing bad about that. It's just the, it's the life that I chose. And it's the life that, that Ty is choosing. And... There's plenty of good things that go along with it, too. I'm making it sound like this is a bad job. This is a great job. Um, there's a lot of great things that come along with it, but that is one of the things that you have to accept. What well, the garage police itself? It typically does. 
typically does on on this type of thing. Yeah, typically does. One way or another, it doesn't mean that Ty's gonna get wrecked, but I wouldn't think his life would be very easy amongst a couple of them. Will the garage police itself with Ross come Sunday? About what? I don't have a problem with Ross. You don't, but you're... it's not my deal. Okay. Not my deal. I gotta focus on our car and that and that stuff. Um, you know, I I don't know how people are gonna react or do. Mm -hmm. Not my deal. What is Hudson's favorite um, dad? Video? Jared Haas with FrenchStretch.com. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check one of those two videos out that we have right beside you. Visit FrenchStretch.com for more great content.